So a few videos ago, I proposed a reading challenge and during that time I read this book, The Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. And when I was done with the book, I wanted to make a video summarizing it and I wanted to make it a little bit more entertaining. So I came across a very nice parallel between the book and the TV series Game of Thrones. So without further ado, let's get started. But first, a little bit more about the book. Ego is the Enemy explores the negative aspects of the ego and its effects on several historical and contemporary figures. In the book, ego is always something negative. Quoting Ryan Holiday, the author, is an unhealthy belief in our own importance, a sense of arrogance, self-centered ambition. There are many definitions around, but in this video we also gonna use the same used by the author. Ryan Holiday takes us through the various stages of a person's life and how the ego can influence and even distort our Path towards greater things. These stages are aspiration, success and failure. To extract practical advice and lessons, the author looks at figures like Benjamin Franklin and their relationship with their ego. Now, instead of looking at historical or contemporary figures, today we will look at characters of the TV series Game of Thrones and from them try to draw the same lessons and advice given in the book. And I chose Game of Thrones because it's full of these complex character arcs which show the three stages represented in the book. For each stage we'll be looking at several Game of Thrones characters and explore how their egos are helping them or damaging their development. And so let's start with the first stage, Aspiration, which is by far the most common stage represented in the Song of Ice and Fire. There are a lot of characters we can choose from, but the best example of a rising character with an out of control ego is definitely Viserys Targaryen. Because of his blood, he's technically the rightful heir of the Iron Throne and therefore his ego is out of control. He's impulsive, entitled and completely willing to do anything to get what he wants. He sells his sister to the Dothraki just to get an army and wants them to immediately march to Westeros and get his Iron Throne. In contrast, Danny is busy learning how to please Drogo, how to speak Dothraki and attending to her dragon axe, while Viserys is passively waiting for his golden crown. By the way he acts, we might think that he's simply crazy, but no. He suffers from something we all suffer to some degree, including other Game of Thrones characters. Viserys dies because he refuses to be patient and to learn, Robb Stark passionately marries another and in the process kills himself, his mother and lover and his army. Theon Greyjoy seeks his peers approval and takes Winterfell without thinking about the next day and we all know what happened to him. And like in Game of Thrones, our world is also filled with these examples of out of control egos. The quest to gain more and more power leads us to dark places, and the consequences may not be death or castration, but still bad nonetheless. We can learn actually a great deal from Viserys and his ego. Don't be entitled. No one owes you anything. Your past doesn't give you rights to act righteous and have things handed to you. You must earn your victories. Keep learning, every situation holds a lesson and if you want to move toward success, it's imperative to be open to new perspective from others. Don't be passionate and restrain yourself. When others disrespect you or make you act without thinking about tomorrow, stop. Think carefully about your actions and don't respond to the haters. So now let's move on to the next phase, success. And in life it's actually difficult for us to define what success really is, but in Game of Thrones, sitting in the Iron Throne, it's perhaps the biggest achievement that you can get. That glorified chair is actually the source of all the backstabbing and bloodshed we see during the show. Which means that power corrupts, or better, the ego feeds off success. In the book, Ryan Holiday describes it by saying that success is intoxicating, yet to sustain it, it requires sobriety. And there's actually a character that embodies this expression of the ego while in the position of power, and that's definitely the Mad King. He doesn't appear much on the show, so let me elaborate. He begins his reign like most kings, focused on improving the realm and using his power in a just way. 
but not long after he begins to use this power for less productive things. He starts resenting the ones who consult him, more specifically Tywin Lannister, the hand of the king at the time. He begins making grand promises like building giant castles without any attempt in fulfilling them. As he worsened, he lost all trust in others, forbidding any sharp objects near him and making others taste everything he eats and drinks. His final words were burn them all, asking the king's guard to burn everyone in the city. In the show, this behavior is explained by the Targaryen madness, a kind of mental disease developed from centuries of inbreeding. But I think it's actually much simpler, a combination of success and uh, out-of-control ego. In our world, we actually got to see this combination in action and the chaos it can create how easy it is for a person to fall in love with himself and success and drag everyone along with it. And so far in Game of Thrones, every single king that ruled fell victim to his ego. The Mad King literally went mad, Robert Baratheon once was a powerful warrior and died a fat, drunken king, and Joffrey, well, Joffrey probably would end up even worse than the Mad King. Well, now that I think about it, it feels like George R. R. Martin is trying to make a point here, that absolute power is poisonous, and for the realm to evolve, someone needs to break this wheel of power. Like for series, we can also learn from the failed kings and extract lessons from how they manage their egos in a position of power. Remember what's important. When we start working towards something greater than ourselves, we have all these goals and ambitions, but at some point during the climb, we tend to forget about them. Make sure you stop and remember why you are still going forward. Trust and learn from others. The power you hold doesn't make you wiser than others. Listen to their opinions and remove your self-interest from the decision-making process. And stay sober. Don't get high on your own success. Remember how fragile power can be and how insignificant it's compared to the world we live in. Basically, don't become mad or a drunken fat ass. Oh. <laughs> and finally, we have failure, the most common and certain phase in anyone's life. In Game of Thrones, failure usually means death, so we cannot use those characters as examples in our day-to-day -day lives. There are only a handful of characters that manage to survive and bounce back from certain failures, and I personally love the character arc of Jaime Lannister. He is first introduced to us as this knight who seems to have everything figured out. His ego has all the reasons to be bloated, he is good-looking, talented, a Lannister, and has the best girl in the whole kingdom. As a result, he's cocky and disrespectful, but as the show progresses, we begin to see past his outer shell and see Jamie for what he really is. From his first interaction with his father, we see how vulnerable and how ungrounded a person can be if it's controlled solely by their ego. But where we see his identity being taken away from him is when he loses his sword hand. His ego keeps his spirits up during his imprisonment and even during the journey with Brienne, but when he loses his hands, he loses himself. His ego is gone and this is what's left of him. This moment is called a catabasis, a sudden descent into the abyss where all beliefs are challenged. We do not control these events and therefore we can only deal with them as they come. When Brienne sees this new Jamie, she goes from despising him to feeling empathy towards him, which in my opinion is crucial for Jamie's recovery from his descent. She makes him see that inaction and feeling sorry for himself is not gonna help him, that only because he lost his ability to sword fight doesn't take away from what he really is and what he can be. And most importantly, she gives him a purpose, a reason to go forward. As a result, he slowly begins to ascend from this abyss. He learns how to use his left hand for sword fighting and accepts that he's not gonna be as good as he was before. He begins to question Cersei's actions and his loyalty towards her. But his biggest character development came at the end of season 7, when he finally confronts Cersei. As a result, he leaves her and finally follows his purpose that he forgot when he killed the Mad King, to protect the people and the realm. From his character arc, we can extract lessons from the ego and failure that are also present in the Ego is the Enemy book. Keep active, don't dwell on the past. Feeling sorry for yourself will only make it worse. The best way to bounce back is by staying busy learning and focusing on the things that you can control. 
share your failures with a friend. Your ego will make you think over and over about the situation and create a destructive internal conversation. Sharing your situation with a friend allows you to view your failures from a different perspective and hopefully help you to recover. And finally, follow your standards. In failure, it's easy to forget your purpose and be corrupted by others. Establish your own set of rules and do your best to stay true to them. Others can judge your actions, but in your eyes, you will be true to your principles. Like Jamie, most characters still alive in the show at some kind of resurrection, a journey back from the underworld, and therefore are stronger and more likely to succeed. Others figuratively, others quite literally. As we saw until now, our ego is always around the corner, and if we don't manage it, we can become our worst enemy. In Game of Thrones, it means mutilation or death, but for us, it means failed relationships and major setbacks. But if we learn from the Game of Thrones characters we saw today and from the book Ego is the Enemy, we can begin to control our ego and make sure we are not corrupted by it. I think I can keep doing these connections between Game of Thrones and this book for forever, but I have to end the video right here. If you want to read the full book, you can use the link down below to buy it on Amazon. It will be supporting the show if you buy the book like that. Or you can go to rodelta.com and find the written form of this summary. So you can read it and better have an idea about the full book, not just the connections with Game of Thrones. I hope you enjoy it and subscribe for more videos like this. Leave a comment down below saying other videos or other books you want me to summarize. And like the page, like the channel, like the video. So do all of that. And I guess I see you on the next video. Bye.